And now, MCI Academy of the Arts, Sciences, Skin Care, and Hair Removers. All inventions may apply. Get your degree at the School of Mega Millions Selling Stuff. Mega Millions Selling Stuff. And I got a special guest here, Joe Mayer, speaking of Mega Millions Selling Stuff. Veteran of trade shows, him and I go back many, many years, both 30 years, and like all great pitchmen, whether it was Billy Mays or Anthony Sullivan, we all cut our lit, uh, chops on trade shows. We we learned to stand there, and we learned to, to, to pitch product and, and close the deal right there at home shows and, and, and consumer trade shows. Joe Maris, welcome to the program. Nice to see you again, Akos. After 30 years, right? Yeah, about 30 years, uh, 25, 30 years. So, so Joe, you and I, well, you and I used to go to, we were in the piano business at the time, and, and you and I used to do these trade shows at the piano, you know, at the pianos in the aisle, and we, remember, if you've ever been to a trade show, the guy, I guess they don't do piano trade shows anymore, and, and keyboards and organs, and, and we used to play there, attract a crowd, and then guys like you and me would go in there and uh, start talking to people, and next thing you know, uh, they were buying, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar pianos and organs from us. Yeah, we put up a little show, people got interested, we got them amazed. Not too amazed. <laughs> you didn't want to get too amazed. Yeah, I might get crazy about it. But then we'd uh, figure out who was a likely suspect to buy. Right. And we start to qualify them. And before you know it, we were closing a deal. So, so you know, when, when we always tell inventors to get out there at trade shows. Get out there. And they're always reluctant, you know. Um, and I don't know about you. I don't, we were just talking about this the other night when we were talking about, you know, in the old days, we would never sit down, right? We'd never sit down on, on, on the booth. Never. We didn't, wouldn't even have a chair to sit down. It doesn't matter if it's 12 hours or 14 hour days. It doesn't matter if the show was 18, 20. Actually, we did that 21 day show in Toronto. Remember that one? 21 days, 100 degrees, wearing suits. Yes, 100 degrees and wearing suits. And we never sat down. The kids today, I was at a trade show. First of all, I think the smartphone has destroyed them, right? Yeah, they're just playing around with their phones. Somebody pays them to look for customers. And they're on YouTube or something else looking at who knows what. Yeah, and they're sitting in the chair, and you have to literally disturb them if you have, want to have a question about the product that they're selling. I think, I think that's really ruined trade shows. So I, and and you see, I guess you were telling me you still don't sit down. No, I see what happens. When you sit down, first of all, and somebody approaches your booth, you start to get up and say, oh, no, just sit there. They don't want to disrupt you. So first of all, you lose the initiative. It's with the client, customer. You have to be ready to approach them, and you have to start the conversation. You have to say something witty, and you have to make sure you never say, can I help you? And if they say, I'm just looking, first thing I say is, I'm just selling. <laughs> it, puts, it puts everybody in a spot where they know what's happening. They know what's next. While they're laughing, you start your pitch. You start to qualify. And it's very hard for somebody at a show once you've laughed with them and shared a laugh, to actually be that rude and walk away. So you have maybe 30, 60 seconds to get on with it. And that's that's your prime time. And once you get on with it and, and they're interested, you're you're on a path to maybe making a sale. That's good advice. That's good advice. Once they start laughing with you in the first 30, 60 seconds, it's hard to be rude and walk away. And I think the rapport is starting to build up. I gotta tell you, I gotta tell them a story about you. I gotta tell one one story. Right? Okay, fine. So uh, we're at a we're at a trade show, home show. And oh I wait think, a minute, will this affect my marriage? No. no okay. <laughs> so we, I remember where we were. Maybe in Detroit, or, or I think it was Toronto. I think it was the National Home Show in Toronto when we were in the exhibition stadium there, and and we're on the side of a corner booth, and we had this beautiful grand piano, right? And and Joe is a virtuoso. Joe is a very very gifted piano player, and even better accordion player. I gotta tell the accordion story too. My goodness. So, so, so the piano, that one might affect your marriage. That, so, so the piano business, he's sitting there playing, <laughs> like just wax out, just playing and playing. And a couple walk up, nice couple, well-dressed kids, you know, perfect sort of couple. You could just see that the, the mother and father wants the kids to learn to play the piano. And they walk up to Joe very politely and, 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 and sort of wait for Joe to be sort of in a pause in his music. And, and they go to Joe and they say, how much is this grand piano? And Joe, without ever missing a beat, goes back and plays and says, it's not for sale. And and then, you know, he just continues playing. And then the customer goes, you're at a home show. What, 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 do you, what do you mean the piano's not for sale? And Joe looked up and said, well, you know, uh, you know, pianos are like snowflakes. You know, every once in a while, one comes along that is so special. The owner's going to take it home. And this is a piano so special. 
and the owner has decided uh, uh, it's not for sale. He's taking it home. And he continues. <laughs> and I'm sitting there watching this going, oh, no. And make a long story short, you know, the customer then asked, if it was for sale, you know, how much would it be? And Joe kept holding his ground. I, I, I don't know how to tell you this again. I told you it's, it's not for sale. At the long story short, I think you came back with an offer for the piano that was well over the retail price. And I was going, oh, my goodness. So walk us through that. Why was, why, what was that sale called? I guess you had a technique there where, where it was, uh, I guess, the not for sale technique. What was that, what was that about? Well, it was, they the, see themselves, they're watching me play, they see themselves owning this piano. And if they're going to ask you how much it is, they already made some sort of decision. So at that point, you know, you almost have them uh, on the path to signing some paperwork. So I'm taking it away from them. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm taking it away. So it's like, like you, you know, you, you, your little kid's eating uh, ice cream, and there's like one scoop left, and you pull the plate away. You're going to go crazy. <laughs> but, but in any case, so, so you take it away. And... And that's that's where you really have them hooked because they don't want to be beat. It's a game. Actually, it's it's a game. It's it's a, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. And it's in that last part of that sale where the person goes kind of crazy. You have to understand this, and that's when you strike when they don't have their marbles in place. So, really, you just you're just taking it away. It's like taking it away. It's like we used to do another, used to do another pitch, not with you, another show where we'd get up with a mic and we'd talk about a piano, a digital piano. And then after all the features and stuff, uh, we'd say, and this is not 10,000, it's not 8,000, it's not 6,000, it's not even 5,000. Thank you very much for coming today. So you turn your back and somebody walks up <laughs> and taps you on the back and goes, how much is that? That's the guy you take in this little room with another piano and you sell him the piano and you go into your routine. It's... So you it's left a, them hanging. It's a yeah. It's, it's you left them hanging. It's a fishing. You're going fishing, the bait. So you left them hanging. You waited for someone to tap on the shoulder, and that's the person who is the most interest. Yeah. So actually, these people were uh, metaphorically tapping me on the shoulder uh, when I was up there playing the piano. Yes. It's, it doesn't it doesn't have to be with the mic, it, playing just something that makes them want to know. As soon as they want to know, they're only a step away from wanting to buy. You have to understand that. If you never get them to want to know, you're not going to get anywhere. So th that sure beats us sitting down in the table with your cell phone in your hand, you know, it's, you know, doing whatever you're doing. I and mean, that's what's happened in home shows today. So people, there's no old school pitchmen out there. There's no people who really want to work. I actually, I actually uh, used to say to the people, I mean, just the fact that you're standing and you're alert and you're watching and, and trying to engage in the people walking by your booth, uh, that's you're halfway home. You're actually halfway there. And if, when you're doing a trade show, one thing I always told all my pitch people is, you know, I take a booth that costs $2,000, right? Let's say it's $2,000. And, and the show was open from like 10 to 6 on a Sunday, and it was open 10 to 8 on the Saturday. I used to add up the hours, and I used to say, you know, this booth is costing us $100 an hour just to stay open. And how could you possibly sit there and have the $100? It's actually $1.50 a minute. So every minute that goes by is costing a dollar fifty. So I think you have to always engage the customer and work hard. And 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 I think Joe epitomizes. How long have you been doing shows and trade shows and and, and, and consumer um, shows and stuff? Since I was about twenties, early twenties, and I started at flea markets. And, and so what? So it's the same thing, right? In the flea yeah, markets? flea markets is the same same thing. Started at flea markets. Uh, I lost my job as a young man. I had a family. And I uh, couldn't find a job. I was, uh, wasn't even in my home state. So I went out and started buying uh, merchandise from stores that couldn't sell it. I asked them, what can't you sell? I said, just bring it, pile it up. And, and he run around, pile it up. And he said, okay, that's $890. I said, oh, no, I'm paying pennies on the dollar. I'm a salvage company. I buy it, take it to the flea market. And, of course, I said, leave your sales tags on them. That's part of the deal. Whatever the sales tag was, I said, you can have for half of that. We start working a half off, off their retail, whatever the sale price was. And then I started realizing, well, there's a lot of technique to being in a flea market. And, uh, and a lot of technique I'd learned as a teenager. I worked in Macy's department store. I learned from some, uh, some people who were very uh, astute at sales. And all this came together. No matter where I was selling, 
flea market store trade show there's really just a few rules and you have to get a good book on sales or get a mentor like me or ACOS and once you have that you're on the road to selling and making money so you get out there get the trade shows and I think one of the great things about trade shows if you're an inventor you're an entrepreneur you actually get the feel for the customer on the product you actually learn a lot on a trade show I mean so much because you're engaging with the client I mean I learned I mean before we go on television I learned the pitch on the floor because I, I knew what uh, what features and benefits the customer reacted to. I, 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 I would know exactly what to make them happy, what made them sad. So I would I would craft the television pitch around from what I learned on the trade show. We always encourage every everybody should get out there and do a trade show. And I think the trade shows are changed nowadays. I mean, back then we used to have home shows and stuff. Now we have these specialty shows like wellness shows and, and women's shows and that sort of thing. So get out there. Get your product, figure out what trade shows are, are applicable, and get out there. Go pay some rent. And don't forget, it's always negotiable. You can negotiate the rent. You can negotiate everything. And get in front of the customers. And for heaven's sakes, don't bring a chair. Don't bring anything that you could sit down on. If you're going to bring a chair, it might be writing contracts. Uh, that's the only time you're allowed to sit. And and get out there and engage with the market. And Joe Maris, thank you so much for being on the Thanks, program. Thanks, so for having me. Good to see you. Yeah. After, we didn't miss a beat. It was like uh, we we didn't uh, part for 20 years. Uh, we got together again and shared some and bro broke some bread and talked about the old war stories. Hey, listen, you're listening to the My Cool Inventions Network, the Academy portion. I hope you learned something. And stick around because after the break, we have Deal of the Week. That's where we feature the best inventive product at the best price. <laughs>